Hi, Jonathan Stark here, and I just wanted to show you uh, how easy it is to add JQ Touch to a regular HTML page to turn it into a really nice looking iPhone application. Um, just sort of doing this by the seat of my pants, and there's a sorry about the background noise, I'm at a Starbucks, <laughs> so uh, hopefully you can hear me. So here we go. Um, first, I have a really simple HTML page. As you can see, there's no real formatting or anything. And uh, all these links are all internal links. They point to other sections in the document. So if I zoom in a little bit and go down to the, uh, oh, if we click there, it's going to pop us around. So it's very simple. Let's look at the code. Um, you can see the head really just has the title in it. And the body has four main sections, about dates, home, and settings. I like to keep my sections in alphabetical order, but uh, you don't have to. Um, so what we do is we need to add some uh, script and CSS links to the head of the document first off. First thing to do is get jQuery in there. You can do that however you like. Uh, you can link to it on Google Code. You can have it locally on your, uh, your hard drive, whatever you want doesn't matter. And then you bring in uh, GQ Touch. Then you bring in GQ Touch.css. And this is um, basically a structural document. That, uh, you wouldn't edit this normally. If you look in here, it's, it's relatively short and just has some uh, structural type of CSS uh, rules. So you wouldn't mess with that. Uh, then what we do is we pull in one of the themes. I'm going to grab the GQ T theme. And you can use, uh, I'm using the regular. Uh, files in every case, but you can use the minified versions as well. Probably a better idea once you get into production. And if you wanted to, you could add your own themes on top of this, so your own CSS uh, on top of this. Um, all right, so now that we have all that set up, we just need to call JQ Touch. I've got a little um, shortcut for that. And this just initializes JQ Touch, tells it to start doing its thing. Um, I'll talk about this icon and the status bar uh, parameters in a second, those properties in a second. All right, so now if I save this and reload the page, all of a sudden it looks kind of fancy. Uh, starting on the About page, which is not good, the reason for that is that uh, About is the first item in the body. Uh, I could move Home up to the top, like so. Like so, and that would work, but I am too anal for that, so I'm going to leave it where it is, and just tell it class equals current. So when we refresh, we'll start on the home page. All right, so let's look at the uh, the code for this little section here. There's really not much going on. We've got a div that represents the toolbar, which is up here, of course. You can see I've got a, uh, a link in there, a class of button, and a class of flip. And it's pointing to the settings area of this page, which is this section. So if I click on that, it's going to do what we think. Pretty sweet, not a lot of code. Um, all right, so I think it would be nice if these had arrows on the right-hand side to indicate that when you click on them, now they're going to slide, like so. So I'll just add a class of arrow, like so. And when we refresh, now I have arrows. Just for fun, I'll add that to this screen as well. So we have no arrows here. Like so. So now if we go back, oh, we need to refresh. Now I've got arrows there. So this class arrow, this is something that lives inside of the JQ Touch theme. So you can write your own themes and do anything you want. Uh, that's just the way the JQ Touch theme is set up. But obviously it's uh, pretty simple to get things the way you want them. Uh, it's also important to note that you can use the uh, the browser's back button. We do support the browser back button. Just 
pretty cool, I think. Even for the flip. Like that. Very nice. Let's take a look at the settings, actually. Uh, this is a form with placeholder, so if I click on it, I can put in my information. Like so. And submit my changes if I like. I'm going to cancel that because it doesn't actually do anything. And if we look at the code for that, it's really quite simple. It's just a form. Naturally, I would have an action, or maybe I would hijack this with Ajax. Uh, and then I've got an owner list with some inputs. Uh, if you're not familiar with the placeholder tag, it was new to me. Um, that is, a, I believe it's an HTML5 thing. But uh, that's pretty sweet. So all this is pretty easy, I think. There's really not a lot of code here. You get a ton of functionality. But wait, there's more. Let's save this to the home screen. And here's where that web clip icon comes in. Up here in the head, I'm specifying that I want the icon to be kilo.png, which is right here on my hard drive. Um, I also take note that I've decided to set the status bar to black. Once I add this to the home screen, and then click on it, it's automatically going to open in full screen mode, which means that there's no browser uh, user interface. There's no location bar at the top at all. There are no um, buttons down at the bottom. This is launched in full screen mode. And since I specified that I wanted this status bar to be black, it's black up here. Uh, the other options are I could set it to uh, the default gray or black translucent, which uh, is real good for maybe for picture type applications. So when you scroll underneath it, uh, it's you can see through it. Orientation events are supported, and by default, things stretch instead of zoom, which I think is really nice. Uh, you might not be able to see it in the movie, but if I click on this back button, it does indicate that I'm clicking it. It gets a little darker. Do that again. And again, all of this, all of the fancy stuff, all of the fancy colors and sizes and fonts and that sort of thing, that's all set in the theme. So you can uh, control that yourself. I'm more, certainly, I'm sure Dave is hope, hoping that uh, a lot of people will write their own themes and share them. Um, so I guess that'll wrap it up for now. Hopefully that um, gives an idea of how easy it is to take advantage of JQ Touch. Thanks.